What's up, everyone? Welcome to Fan Sports New York Varsity. I'm your host, Frank Langella, joined by my co-host, Marsilio Langella. And Mars, this is our week three preview for section 1A. We're already week into week three of the season. Have some big matchups coming up here. Now we're going to start looking into some league standing soon and maybe even start talking playoffs pretty soon. But again, some huge matchups, Mars. I want to welcome you to the show, man. How's it going, brother? Yeah, it's going well, dude. And I'm really looking forward to this week. And, and we had some really interesting matchups. Then, you know, your boy's been dominating the pick'em uh, pick choices for the overall section one. So, you know, I'm looking forward to widening my lead here in a lot of ways. So, I guess uh, let's just get right to it. Yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, one game lead is not a widening lead. It's, uh, it's a very thin, paper-thin lead. But I want to welcome all our fans to the show. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, thank you guys so much. If you don't know who we are, we cover Section 1 football, and also, how dare you not know who we are at this point? Come on now. Um, but how the show is going to work, guys, we're going to talk about the games on Slate. We're going to break down five of the biggest games. We'll take a dive, a deep dive into them, and then we're going to pick all the games at the end. So we will touch all the games no matter, no matter what. But before we get started, if you do like this content, please make sure to give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to really help us um, continue to grow and also if you would like to donate to our cause um, we are a free service a uh, free group um, we don't do a subscription uh, based service um, as of now and and all our donations um, go back into our product and try to build and grow um, so we appreciate anything from our fans um, and thank you guys for those who have donated um, and you can get access to our patreon via our description below and via our website at fansportsny.com all right, since that's all done, let's talk about the games on Slate Mars, and then we'll go into our breakdowns. Um, St. Francis Academy, their B team, um, is playing at Somers, who is 2-0. This is obviously a non-league game, a big-time school coming into New York, into Section 1. Eastchester, 2-1 at Clarkstown North, who's 1-2. That is a league game. Clarkstown South, 2-0 at Fox Lane, who's 1-2. That is also a league game. Nyack, 0-2 at Ride, that's 3-0, is a league game. Yorktown, 2-1 at Harrison, who's 2-1. That is a league game. Pelham, 3-0 at Mayapak, who's 1-1, is a league game. Lakeland, 2-1 at Brewster, who's 0-2, is a league game. And Sleepy Hollow, 2-1 at John J. Cross River, who is 1-2, that is a league game as well. Those are the games on slate. Let's go into the breakdown matchups. We'll do five of them, Mars. First one I want to talk about, Pelham, 3-0 at Mayapak, who is 1-1. One one. Mayapak was on a bye last week. Pelham won versus Sleepy Hollow. This is a league game, and these two teams have not played each other, Mars, um, since Max Preps has been around. I don't know, before 2004, but usually they don't play each other because Pelham usually is a smaller school. Mayapak is a big boy school. They don't haven't really had a chance to to meet up until now, right? So it's been well over 18 years since these two. So very interesting scenario here. But let's start with Pelham. Offensively, Mars, they have been really good. 92 points scored in the first uh, three weeks of the season. Only giving up 30. But my big question about Pelham, Mars, feels like they don't get the same type of respect as some of these other programs Um in section one. And I think, you know, being three and oh after the season that they had last year, graduated a bunch of players. And to start three and oh, I think is a big deal. And I feel like this is kind of a respect game right here. And starting offensively, this offensive line deserves a lot of credit. I mean, they're up against the big front. They're going up against a big front in Maypack. This is going to be another test for them. Uh, the offense has been very explosive. They've been a big reason why on that offensive line. But they're going up against a big front, probably the biggest front that they've played so far this year. Um, but the duo of running back Teddy Johnson, Mars, who's had seven touchdowns so far this year. Um, last week, he rushed for, what is it, 253 yards? Unbelievable. And Timmy Meyer, he had over 160 all-purpose yards last week. He has six touchdowns as well this week, this season. That duo has been absolutely deadly. Um, and I think that's a, been a really impressive uh, rush duo. And they also receive out of the backfield, which has also been really important. And their spark plug, their quarterback, Callum Reed. And he had three passing touchdowns last week. Maypack has given up some big pass plays uh, so far this season. And not so much like bombs, but like big third down completions, drive kind of continuate, continuing plays. And I think Callum Reed could have some success. I think Maypack is not easy to run in between the tackles with. 
Pelham is going to see if they can try. I think that it's going to be a uh, kind of a strength for strength type of thing. Um, but I do think they have to test out the edge. I think it's going to be really important. And turnovers are going to be huge. They got to protect the ball. May pack first two weeks. The defense has kind of been a bend, but don't break defense. And they've come up with some big turnovers and some big moments and some big stops in the red zone. So finishing drives and protecting the ball is going to be huge for Pelham. You know, so I kind of want to see that defensively. Listen, Luke Green is a is a mess. No question about it. Um, he's one of the best defensive players in the class. But the number one priority has got to be to slow down Joey Koch, right? Now, he is the engine of Apex offense. He has to be the number one priority. And I think, listen, wherever Green is, he's going to get double teamed most of the time. Maybe they try to move Green around, right? Line up at the defensive tackle spot, line up at the DN spot. Um, I think it'll open up some one-on-one opportunities for the other defensive linemen. And so those other D linemen and this linebacking core Mars is going to have to play huge, especially when Maybach comes out with tight ends. They come out with some heavy looks. They're trying to attack that C gap and get Joey Koch out on the edge. Those guys are going to have to dominate up front. And listen, they, that's what they're going to try to hit you with. And guys like Myers, guys like Johnson, you know, they're going to have to play big as well. And the thing that is, you know, Maypack likes to set up that play action, um, by handing the ball to Koch a bunch of times, I'll hand it off in spread looks, hand them off in heavy looks, and then here comes a play action, right? And so that's what Pelham needs to take away. They've got to take away those big, deep balls, but that front seven's got to play big. Mars, what are your thoughts on Pelham? Yeah, I think Pelham is definitely one of the you know, most, I guess you would say, disrespected teams out there right now because of the fact that they literally have been explosive on the offensive end. They're not and, talking about uh, a lot. Yeah, and they just they just been kind of passed over over a lot of other teams that uh, let's be honest aren't playing to the same level as they are, right? And I think that offensively they've been very explosive. I think I like really like the way that they've been you know running the ball. They've been really just been lighting it up, right? especially on the rush offense. And their offensive line has a lot to do with it. And I think they definitely need a lot more respect than what they're getting. And I think they're gonna have to have, have to have another big game this week because, like you said. Maybach is supposed to be the big boys here, right? They're the they're the biggest school in Section One A, right? And now you're playing uh, you're top the, three, top three. Sorry, the top three school in Section One A, and, and Palom is this small, tiny school, right? They should, it, based on numbers alone, Palom should not be the team that we, that can move bodies if they're off the line. But they're gonna have to this week, right? I think this off the line is gonna have to have a big game. To really open up some lanes defensively, like you said, Luke Green is one of the best defense players in Section One A, and I think that he needs to have a big showing to really drive home the idea that they deserve respect, right? And at the end of the day, the priority is Joey Koch. He's the guy, right? He's the dude that is the the entire, I'm not gonna say the entire offense, but he's the guy. He's the dude that will make this offense from APAC move. So if he's not in the picture, if he's not playing well. And all of a sudden, I think the offense might have some issues. So for Pelham, it's going to be about limiting about what Joey Cox does and really having some explosive plays on, on, on the rush offense. And I think they'll be okay. Yeah, when we go to Mayapak, and we know this is going to be, again, at home, a uh, big league game. Uh, they lost la- the last time they played against East Chester. I think the Mayapak crowd is going to be absolutely crazy. I think, uh, you know, they're going to be revved up, ready to go. And I think Mayapak coming off the bye... They've had now two weeks to prepare, right? Two weeks to prepare for Pelham. I think they're going to be, again, this is not a do or die game, but this this game is going to feel like there's some desperation behind it, right? Being at home in a big league game. And when I look at offensively, you know, I think obviously they're at best running the ball with Koch as much as possible, right? And I thought last week, you know, we heard after the game, Maypack definitely had a size advantage versus Eastchester. Um, but they just didn't feel like they got the same push that they were expecting, right? And, you know, the offensive line, you know, kind of got called out, right? So we're going to see, right, how they respond this week. And Pelham is going to be a bigger front um, than Eastchester, no question. Um, They also have probably one of the best defensive linemen in the class, right? So this is going to be, I think, a jump up. Not saying Eastchester, they were really tough in their front seven using their speed. This is going to be a little jump up in size, versus East Chester. So I'm interested to see how the offensive line plays, but it's kind of the Koch brothers show, right? Joey Koch, that running back, he is huge for them. He is a big play threat. When he gets out on that edge, Mars, there's not many people who are as fast as he is. Um, he is a big play guy, and he also runs hard. I mean, this is a guy who can, you know, he, he's a big tackle to tackle runner and edge runner, he, but at times he can run in between the tackles and run hard. I mean, he is a very good football player. 
for them and he can run out of the spread but he's not the only one his brother danny cox he's a big play receiver right so he's a guy that you hand the ball off to and you can also throw to cox at a play action um and they also kind of you know they're going to do some option stuff right so they're going to do some read stuff you know kind of get running downhill i think it's going to be really intriguing to see how maybach comes out offensively this time but we're going to see it all starts up front with me and give cox he's got to have 20 no question about it. He has to have 25 plus touches in this game. Whether it's running the ball 25 times or it's a mix of running and receiving, he needs the ball 25 plus times. No question. Yeah. Defensively, listen, I actually thought the defense overall for Maypac when they played East, East Chester played pretty solid. I mean, they gave up 13 points, right? It's not a lot of points. Um, I thought defensive lineman Anthony Porco was very disruptive. I mean, there were times he blew up drives practically on his own. Um, he made some huge plays, but this defense swarmed pretty well, and they were tough to run in between the tackles with. So we're going to see if, if Pelham, I don't think he's going to have that, you know, he's going to be very successful doing that either because of the size that Mayapak has. And and Porco, is he's a menace. He's a menace on the defensive line, especially at the defensive end spot, and he's going to have to play huge in this game. Again, they have multiple guys in Pelham, those kind of that dual-headed monster in Myers and Johnson. But keeping the quarterback, Callum Reed, in the pocket is also going to be huge. He's not a very tall guy, so you want to keep him in the pocket. Marsh, what are your thoughts on May back? Yeah, I mean, uh, the fact that they had a bye week gives you more of an incentive to that you have two weeks to prepare, right? And like you said, after you know a tough loss last week, um, a few things, the offensive line was called out, and I think that they need to now step it up, right? I think they need to prove to people that they can – that they can play, and on top of that, you're playing in Maypack, right? Playing at Maypack is a very difficult thing to do. So cause you always have the, the crowd's always wild, uh, you know, wild, just wild, and I think they just riled up the play. And I think that the fact they haven't get to see a week of football gives them more of a reason to be crazed out of their minds. So um, I think, like you said, the Koch brothers are going to be the key cogs in this offense. I think Joey Koch is one of the best athletes running the ball right now in Section One A, and I think that. He's like you said. He needs to have at least that 25, uh, you know, touching the ball at least 25 times, whether it's by catching it or running the ball in that in any way, shape, or form. And obviously, his brother Danny Koch is also a very big playmaker. And you know, he just he's, he's, he's an athlete. I think he can make play, big plays too. So it's going to be the offense is going to be run through those two guys. And obviously, on the defensive side, you have to give a lot of props to Anthony Porco. I mean, he's he's a guy. Right? He's a dude. He he can he is. He's a force on the defensive line. He's the leader of that defense. He's the leader of that defense. No, he really is. And, and no, I think that, and I, I said this at the beginning of the season, I knew that he was a kid that would you know, be a force on this defense. And I said right from the beginning that him and Joey Codge are going to be the two guys that you have to prioritize on the offense and defense side of the ball. So I'm glad to see that he's performing well. He's He's been performing great. And I think that at the end of the day, they need to try to – Really keep, keep contained because obviously when you're looking at Pelham, they're going to try to open up some lanes for the, for the playmakers and get to the outside and make some plays. And my matchup to watch, Morris, is that Maypeg offensive line versus this Pelham defensive line. Um, I think that's going to be huge on who wins this matchup. Um, so that's one to keep an eye on. All right, Morris, let's go to the next matchup that I want to talk about, and that is Eastchester 2-1 and one at Carstown North, who is 1-2. This is a league game. Eastchester lost to Somers. Um, last week, Clarkstown North lost at John Jay Cross River. And this, again, you know, we'll get into kind of how each team looks at it. But Clarkstown North 2 0 versus East Chester. They won last year 40 to 14. And let's start with East Chester. I think they, they played Somers pretty well uh, in the first half bars. It was, what, 7 7 um, for most of the first half. Um, this is a scrappy East Chester team. When you look offensively, they have weapons. I mean, we talk about the quarterback, Frankie Provenzale. Wasn't very efficient last week, and that was a huge 10 of 26 for 104 yards and a touchdown. He also had 47 yards rushing. Um, but again, playing Somers defense is not easy, right? But they want to try to definitely be more efficient throwing the football. Way too many incompletions, right? You're not moving the chain, right? You're not getting into a rhythm. Um, so you would definitely want to be more consistent there. Um, wide receiver Aiden Schultz, he had a receiving touchdown last week. This is a guy who's been a valuable target for them and very reliable target in this passing offense. Dom Sparandino, we know he had 84 total yards. This guy who can run the ball. You could throw it to him. Um, I think they'll have an easier time running the ball this week. Clarkstown North gave up over 200 uh, yards passing last week. So 
there's going to be some opportunities to hit some big plays in the passing game and also have some opportunities running the ball. They also gave up over 150 rushing yards, right? The Clarkstown North gives up yards um, for the first couple weeks of the season. Right? And last week you saw that. So East Chester can have some opportunities here. If this old line can match the physicality up front of Clarkstown North, there will be those opportunities to make some big plays. Defensively, you know, a couple weeks ago, they locked down Maypeck pretty good. Outside a couple uh, big runs, they did a pretty darn good job of locking down Maypeck a couple weeks ago. And they gave Somers trouble in the first half, like I mentioned, last week. I mean, this is a defense that's not very big, but they move well, and they're scrappy. And I, I think, again, they if they can swarm to the ball, Arsenal North is going to run that, you know, a mix of some of the spread stuff, some of the wing tee stuff. You know, might have a backup quarterback that's starting. If this defense can swarm to the ball and play to the same level they had the last two weeks, especially in the first half versus Somers and the way they played versus Maypack, they're going to have a real chance in this game. I mean, guys like Sorrow, Bloom, Chiafone, Sparadino on the back end, they got some guys who can play. Not very big like I talked about, but guys who can swarm. And if these guys especially can block down those C gaps and the outside, which is what Carson North loves to attack, especially on counters, they got to read linemen. Right? This is going to be a big one where you can't just be staring in the backfield. they got to read flow read to linemen because these linemen love to pull. They love to move offensive linemen. This is going to be huge for this defense, Mars. What are your thoughts on Eastchester? Yeah, I think Eastchester, I think they played very tough. I think the fact that they you know, kept it close with someone for the first half, and it shows you that they have some, some fire in them, right? I know that they... Kind of, uh, you know, they made some lines like, yeah, we're not afraid of Somers, and usually don't wanna, you don't want to see that on the newspaper or a low or anything like that. I think it was, a, it was a big call. I mean, they kind of stepped up to the plate, and they, you know, they played tough. I mean, I gotta give them a lot of credit there. And I think offensively, they just need to be more consistent, especially on the pass. So when, you know, they, they, uh, like you said, it was 10 of 10 for 26 last week, and I think they need to be more efficient. Make the easy routes and make, throw the easy passes, and then I think you can open up the run a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, I think they are a scrappy team. And the offensive line is really what's going to allow for this this you know, offense to really move. Right? So they need to step it up big time. And defensively, I agree with you. They're a scrappy guy, a group of guys. They need to swarm, but most importantly, keep contained. Do not allow for New to really be able to get to the outside because they want to do that. They know that they have the playmakers to beat you on the outside speed. So if they can keep them contained, at least we'll be a close one. When I go to Clarkstown North offensively, obviously the big question mark is at the quarterback spot. I didn't see Malizia play last week. I don't know his status. Um, but again, it's going to be huge when you don't have a starting quarterback or whether he comes back. This offensive line needs to control up front, right? They're going to have another size advantage against East Chester. Um, they're not a huge offensive line, but they are going to have a bit of a size advantage and they need to move bodies, right? They need to move bodies. They need to control the time of possession. They need to keep the ball out of East Chester's hands who have a bunch of playmakers. It's going to be really important. So I'm looking at guys to be led by this offensive line and these running backs to run with some physicality, right? Guys like Loudon and Lopez, these guys could do a good job on outside runs, counters, but they have to run with some physicality. They got to keep drives going, right? They got to help their defense by keeping them on the sideline and they need to run the ball with some physicality. Um, I think that's a way that they can find success, some success, no matter who the quarterback is. And that will open up play action, right? So that's going to be huge for them. Defensively, Mars, they have just been hurt by big plays. Too many big plays. Um, you know, they've had tough opportunities versus John Jay Cross River and Pelham. But they've given up over 350 uh, yards total in back-to-back -back weeks. Right. And so that's just too many chunk plays, too many yards. Um, and they're going up against another team with an explosive uh, playmakers. Right. So they have to be better on the defensive side of the ball. And again, you're going to see East Chester. They like to roll out their quarterbacks. They like to, you know, give the quarterbacks a run pass option where they can take off a run or throw it. Um, they're going to have to uh, uh, protect the edges of this defense and force them to run in between the tackle box. And Sparadino is a slippery player. They have to keep an eye on him. This is a guy who can run the ball, a guy who can receive out of the backfield. There's some weapons that they have to do, but what can help them, Mars? Getting some pressure up front. Right? Guys like Bordas uh, being very aggressive up front, um, and these secondary guys are going to have to stick to these receivers. It's going to be really important. Mars, what are your thoughts on Clarkstown North? Yeah, yeah I, I think the, the first thing is I'm worried about the health. Right? Right? I think the health concern is obviously really important here, and like you said, we don't really get a, uh, a health report for any team, so we're going to just making these, you know, I guess, and, you know, educated guesses based on what we think we can play. 
uh, based, based on what we've seen. But basically, I think, I think you're right. The fact that the offensive line does have a size advantage, so they need to be uh, you know, efficient I know, on opening up lanes to these backs, opening up lanes to these playmakers so that they can continually make big plays and then open up all the routes on the offensive side. And on the defensive side, they need, like, they, they need to give them too many yards. I mean, like you said, about 300 plus yards both games. And I think that's just way too much. You're killing yourself on tempo. You're allowing teams to drive on you for such a long period of time. The defense just, uh, just becomes exhausted. So they need to really slow up the tempo to keep, you know, you're at least trying to get some control, make some big plays, and the front needs to step it up. I think they need to make, you know, force some issues, or my biggest thing, force some turnover. I think that would be a really big thing for them, at least get their offense back. Yeah, and one way it can help is keeping quarterbacks in the pocket. Um, my matchup to watch for this, I'm looking at this Clarkstown North offensive line versus this East Chester front four and the linebackers. Again, East Chester's group, first half versus Somers against the whole game versus May Pack. They've been pretty solid, right? And can they do that again against another physical front is going to be really important. Let's go to the next game, Mars. Clarkstown South, 2-0 and at Fox Lane, who's 1-2. and This is also a league game. Clarkstown South, 1 versus Lakeland. Fox Lane, 1 at Nyack. And when you look historically, Clarkstown South, 6-0 and versus Fox Lane, but the last time they played was in 2018. So it's been a couple of years. Um, but let's start with Clarkstown South. Um, offensively, Mars, they have scored 80 points. They've also allowed 37 points total. Um, so pretty good on both sides of the ball. Again, defensively, you know, a little bit more lapses, um, but they gave up zero points last week. So all that 37 was from week one. Um, but let's start offensively. Last week, I was impressed by their rush attack, Mars. We know that they have a strong pass attack, but they ran for over 200 yards last week. Um, and uh, here, they're running back 124 yards, two touchdowns. This offensive line controlled up front, moved bodies. They were physical. I was really impressed by it. And if they continue to do that and create balance on this offense, which was already dead, I mean, now it, it pretty much opens up a whole new dynamic um, for this team. But their quarterback holder, Mars, very efficient. Five for eight, 81 yards and a touchdown. Patera had a receiving touchdown. Uh, but they're going up against a Fox Lane defense that is scrappy. But Clarkstown South, that balance makes them extremely dangerous. They have weapons on the outside that they can run the ball consistently with some physicality. You know, th this is pretty dangerous. This is a dangerous formula. Um, defensively, zero points last week. Now, I know they went up against a backup quarterback, but they had four sacks, um, sparing Lewis, Holland, um, Luthner. They all had sacks. They also had a couple INTs, both by Evangelista, um, Chris Ale, who is a stud wide receiver for them, but also really good two way player, Mars. He was phenomenal. 14 tackles last week, including four for tackle for loss. Um, but obviously the number one priority is stopping this Fox Lane rush attack, um, which has been really impressive last week. You know, a couple weeks ago, they did struggle at times versus Harrison to stop the run. So it's going to be real important to stop this rush attack for Fox Lane. Um, Fox Lane also on special teams, Mars, gave up a uh, kick return touchdown last week. Patera back there, he's a very dangerous returner. Um, keep an eye on that special teams part, Mars. What are your thoughts on Clarkstown South? Yeah, yeah, I think I that I really like the way that they, they you know, did. I think they did a great job running the ball last week, and I think that the offensive line, line was dominant. I think that, that they're, they're going to be really the driving force for this offense to you either improve or stay the same. It really depends on how the offensive line plays. If they get better, and all of a sudden the offense will expand what they can do, and now they'll become more dominant. And I think it's going to depend on them. And the same thing we said about the, the front four. Um, from the defensive side, I think that they're going to have to be the ones that step it up, especially because Fox Lane has a really good rush offense. So the D-line needs to really try to close down these gaps and try to make sure they keep, you know, the, the win the trench battle, right? If they can win that trench battle, you can at least kind of force Fox Lane and have to come up with something different uh, because they, their rush offense is just so damn good. So I think that they, they need to really, uh, you know, win the trenches here. And I think that would really benefit their favor. Yeah, and I do want to say, I think I butchered Chris's name earlier. It's Chris Ali. <laughs> so, ex excuse me again, guys. Um, but let's move to Fox Lane. And the last two weeks, Mars, you know, the offense has kind of been hit or miss. They scored 30 points. Defensively, they're scrapping unit, giving up only 38. Um, so not too bad. Offensively, the rush attack really exploded, right? We talked about that last week. They ran, ran for over 230 yards. Starts with Max Travis, Mars. Um, he had over 290 total yards. Unbelievable. I mean, that was a tremendous performance by him. Their quarterback, John uh, 
Zernick, 7 to 10, 115 yards and a touchdown, right? Very efficient, right? Hitting some explosive plays. But it starts with their rush attack. Their rush attack opens up their whole offense, and they're looking to run the ball first, right? They're looking to impose their will, to be scrappy, to be physical. Can they do it against Clarkstown South? A couple of weeks ago, struggled to stop the run, right? So there is some opportunities there to run the football if they can match the physicality of South up front. Because last week they were very good. Um, they they shut a team out, right? So we're going to see if Fox Lane can bring that scrappiness to physicality on the offensive uh, front of the ball and run the football. Now defensively, Mars, I mentioned this is a scrappy group. They don't give up a, too many big plays. Um and they're coming after you. I mean, they don't sit back. They're, they're very aggressive. I really like guys like Minotti, who had 12 tackles, super active, always around the ball. And also Charlie Hoyt, another guy. He had 11 tackles and a fumble recovery. How do they match up with all these weapons? I don't think they have enough DBs to match up with everybody, but can they generate pressure, right? If they can, again, create some pressure, which will lead to some opportunities to, to turn the ball over, Fox Lane, you know, that's going to be their best hope, right? And to control time of possession on the offensive side of the ball. Right, don't give South too many possessions is going to be key in this one for them. Mars, what are your thoughts on Fox Lane? Yeah, yeah Fox, Fox Lane, I really, really like the way that they ran the ball. Their the offense uh, was, was revolving around the run, and they just exploded. Right, right? The offensive line had done a great job, job um, but, but I really think Fox Lane, Lane especially with running, running the ball, really opens up everything else. Right? right? I, think I think when you look at the defensive side, I think they need to really try to you know slow up any sort of big plays. I think they need to send the blitzes, but they have to capitalize on this. Try to win on those third, you know, third down, you know, situations, and really just make sure they get their offense back on the field. Because I think that if they get their their rush attack going, it's going to be really tough to slow it down, and that means that you control the pacing of the game, and that just allows them to to, to, to really just dictate kind of the momentum, right? If they can do that, it really just forces teams to really have to struggle to slow them down. Yeah, the matchup I'm looking at, Mars, the Clark Sound South linebackers versus this Fox Lane rush attack. And they played very well last week. Um, the front seven, the linebackers. I'm going to see it again this week, right? It's all about consistency when it comes to South, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um, let's go to the next game. Next breakdown, Mars. Lakeland, 2-1 and one at Brewster, who's 0-2. This is a team, these teams have been playing each other for a while as well. Lakeland lost versus South last week. Brewster lost versus Harrison. And when you look historically, Brewster is six and two versus Lakeland. They have won five straight, including a win last year, fourteen to nothing. And when I look at Lakeland, listen, it was you know there are games, Mars. We've coached for a little while um, now, and when you lose, you know you get donutted and you lose by thirty plus points. Those are the games that you watch the film, you you learn really quickly on what went wrong, and you burn it. Right? You don't go back and look back at it again. This is a game that you kind of want to filter out of your mind as fast as possible. Um, now we know Grady Leonard, the quarterback, did not play, right? And so that's a huge loss, right? And what his status is coming into this game, I don't know, right? We don't get those updates. Um, but he's obviously extremely important. And when you look at the offensive side of the ball, obviously getting Grady Leonard back um, is extremely important. But, you know, Mike Ledner, he's filled in, and he was okay, right? He, he wasn't, you know, like, Losing Grady is not the reason they lost 42 no, right? So, you know, he stepped in. He had 88 yards rushing. I mean, 88 yards passing, 69 yards rushing. And, he, you know, he did – he was a positive when Coach talked about it after the game. But to me, if no matter who the quarterback is, they, they have to run the ball a little bit more, right? And Scaglione, he had 65 yards rushing. They need these guys to step up, including their weapons on the outside, to win those matchups, to find open spaces, to help their quarterback um, in their time of need. And this offensive line, I mean, just – they gave up – Four, I think four sacks last week on the offensive line. They had two INTs. You, you can't allow this much pressure and turn the ball up, right? Those things can happen. It hurts uh, your offense, and it puts more pressure on your defense to hold up and make plays. And so obviously the big thing for Lakeland is, you know, whoever the quarterback is, they got to protect the ball better. And offensively, they got to do a better job uh, protecting the quarterback. And we know Brewster – solid up front they're going to generate some pressure and maybe even bring pressure to kind of test this offensive line um, so that's going to be really important defensively mars obviously again they got pushed around last week i'm looking to see this defense step up i think they will rebound this is a fast defense if you look at linebackers like Carell, uh carol nugent defensive line like mendel brewster is going to be very physical they're going to try to run right at you lakeland didn't do a great job of stopping the run last week 
can they step up this week is going to be huge because Bruce, they like to run at you physically. And then the play action game is pretty darn good that they do, that they do a good job of. Um, and so that's where they hit some of their big plays. So defensively, you know, a couple guys who did, you know, have a decent game, uh, Dom Toscano, he had six tackles, DJ Brody he had five tackles and a forced fumble, but overall, I think this defense is better than what they put out last week. Similar to their offense, I'm expecting them to step up and use their speed to their advantage because they're not going to have a size advantage, but they can use their speed. Mars, what are your thoughts on Lakeland? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think Lakeland, Lakeland is, uh, uh, the, the big, big concern, concern right, right now is just health. health. I, think I think that, that they, they, you know, you know knowing who's going to be playing, who's not, is really going to be the biggest concern that I have. Uh, I think generally um, they've been, you know, running the ball well, but it's going to be important that they establish the run for this game because of the fact that Bruce is going to have more of a size advantage compared to they, uh, especially on the front. And I really think the offensive line is going to need to step it up, right? They're going to need to at least protect the, uh, you know, especially the pass protection, they need to really set that tone early so that they don't give up as many, you know, big plays and, you know, their quarterback really being on the, on the back and forcing turnovers. I mean, the biggest thing is that a lot of times whenever a young quarterback or, or anybody steps in at, at, at that position and they feel like they have to be rushed because of the pass rush, they're going to make mistakes. So to, to ease up on that, you got to help out with pass protection. I think defensively, I agree with you. I don't think that they're going to be to have as bad of showing as they did last week. I think they're going to kind of re- regroup and say, all right, what are the key things, things you have to do to focus on? And I think it's going to be a lot of it has to do is stop the run. Slow down this, you know, this, this rush off that the Bruce has. Because they're, they're going to run downhill. They're going to try to you know, just kind of out man you, especially up front. And this defensive front needs to step it up or else they'll get pushed around. When I look at Brewster, Mars, and I think this is, you know, we talked about a couple games earlier um, about Maypac. I think Brewster's in a similar situation. They're at home. Um, they're 0-2 in league play. This kind of feels, again, it's not a do or die, but... This feels like a massive game um, that they need to win against uh, a familiar foe in Lakeland in a league matchup. Um, and offensively, listen, I think this offense can move the ball. I think they've shown over the first couple of weeks they moved it pretty well. Last week they had over 370 yards of offense, and it was pretty balanced running and passing the ball. It obviously starts with their quarterback, Pirello, who 15 of 22 marks, pretty good mark, pretty good numbers on completion percentage, 196 yards, also pretty good, three touchdowns. He also rushed for 34 yards, but what is the big black eye here? Three INTs, right? And so pretty darn efficient, scoring the ball, hitting some big plays, but the turnovers are absolute killers. Um, And so that's definitely going to be an emphasis, but they have some weapons, right? Alex Ramsey had a receiving touchdown. Walters had a receiving touchdown. We know about Sanchez is another guy. They're running back Anfuso who runs hard. I mean, they have some weapons, right? And if they can win at the point of attack up front, which again, these are not giant hulking offensive linemen, but they got some bulk to them and they got some strength to them. And so can they try to push around the speed of Lakeland, um, similar to what South did to them last week, kind of run right at them. Don't allow these linebackers and defensive linemen to move horizontally, try to run right downhill. And then the play action could be huge at it. Like I mentioned, Brewster's done a pretty good job out of the play action pass. It's when they get behind and they just kind of do the straight drop back um, out of gun is where kind of those turnovers come in, right? And when the play action's there, that's when the big plays come. Defensively, um, again, I do think Lakeland's offense is going to step up from last week. Don't know who the quarterback is going to be. We're going to see when the game comes around, whether it's Grady Leonard or whether it's a backup quarterback and Ledner. Um, but the big thing to me is you can't let Lakeland outside. They have a bunch of weapons, right? And they want to try to use their speed, get out on the edge. Even running the ball, I do think they do a lot of off-tackle and outside runs, and obviously the quick passing game is going to be huge. So they got to be aware of that keep the quarterback in the pocket, no matter who it is. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Brewster? Yeah, you know, with Brewster, I, I think, think that they, they do have a home field advantage. I know that they were struggling so far this season, season but I think they, they have the ability to kind of get some momentum on the side, especially if they start developing the run. I think that they were pretty well balanced with one pass and run, but I think that they need to be more efficient. They need to stop the turnovers. And really just, just be kind of methodical down the field. I think they have the ability to make big plays, but it's really going to have to depend on the offensive line to win the trenches. And defensively, I really think that, you know, I don't think they're going to be as, you know, they're not going to struggle as much as they did last game, but I think it's going to be trying to limit the amount of outside plays that, that, that Lakeland can do. Because I think that's going to be their advantage. They have the speed and athleticism to get outside. If you can stop that, I think Bruce will have a chance. My matchup, I'm looking at the combo of Perello and Fuso running the ball versus this Lakeland linebacking crew. Again, I think this linebacking crew for Lakeland 
um, is one of the best in the class. And so I'm interested to see that kind of matchup between those two and those linebackers uh, is going to be really intriguing. All right, boys, let's go to the game of the week. And that is Yorktown 2-1 and one at Harrison, who's 2-1. and one. This is a league game. Yorktown played a very fun game versus Rye that lost at the end. Harrison won versus Brewster. And when you look at historically, Harrison's 2-1 and one versus Yorktown, but they last played in 2013 where Yorktown won that matchup. Um, so it's been nine years since these two teams have played. Um, but let's start with Yorktown. Um, offensively, it was a bit of a struggle last week, but defensively, the last two weeks, Mars, they've only allowed 22 points. Um, offensively, they scored 36. So last week, it was struggle offensively. A couple weeks ago, you know, in their week zero, they were pretty high-powered. Defensively, the last two weeks, so I've been very impressed. Defensively, we'll get into each unit. Let's start offensively. Talked about it being a bit of a struggle. Obviously, their stud, uh, pretty much primary ball handler, Myrell, is he had still 97 total yards of offense but 40 of it on the ground, right? So 40 yards rushing on the ground, which is pretty low for his standards. Um, you know, the defensive ride did a pretty good job of bottling him up. And so they want to try to get him in space more, right? Overall, his numbers are solid. Again, 97 yards total is pretty solid numbers, but this was a guy that was putting up 200 plus for multiple weeks, right? So he obviously is huge for this offense, kind of get generating going. And when he's not consistently rushing the ball, it actually puts a big burden on their passing game because Gonzalez, young quarterback Mars, six of 18 passing, right? Six of 18, too many incompletions, but they did hit some big ones, 118 yards and a touchdown, but two INTs as well, right? So that efficiency in the passing game, you see dip when Myrellis can't get going, like running the football. There's a correlation there. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, but they have some guys, right? Their wide receiver, Costello, he was a big play guy for them. Three receptions, 58 yards and a touchdown last week. Can they finish drives is going to be a huge one. They got a really tough sideline call where they're, you know, Myrellis was called out of bounds. And if you look at the replay, he doesn't look like he's out of bounds, which result was just, was a touchdown that got called back. Um, so, you know, that that's tough. But again, overall, you got to find a way to finish those type of drives, right? You got to finish those drives. Um, you got to keep that, again, they had some great moments. That's what hurt. It's like, you know what they did at times, move the ball but they just couldn't finish it, right? So that's going to be huge this time around. Defensively, Mars, last week, they gave up 63 yards of offense into the third quarter before that big touchdown that Rye scored for 65 yards. I mean, holding Rye's offense to, to pretty much nothing for three quarters is pretty impressive. I mean, this, this Yorktown defense has been really good. I mean, they are an aggressive defense. They're really coming after you. They'll at times put their DBs on an island, but they force turnovers. They create negative plays. They had over four sacks last week. They had a fumble last week. They had a safety last week. And they have a, different guys who can make big plays for you. Constantine is a big-time player for them at the defensive back spot. Very active guy, but Desanio, their linebacker, which I probably butchered his name about 100 times already, but he had six tackles and a sack. He's a guy constantly by the ball, that linebacker. He has a nose for the football. Verone had nine tackles. Duncan had two sacks. Cicilline had two sacks. I mean, different names each week step up for this group. And that, to me, is a strong defensive unit when you get that kind of contribution from multiple guys. Um, going up against this Harrison Thagmars, option ball, right, with some tempo. Can these DBs match up with a guy like McWallen and they can contain them with those defensive linemen and linebackers inside the box? That's the test. Right, but I think this unit has has the capability, Mars. What are your thoughts on your town? Yeah, yeah, when I look, I look at your town, I mean, they, they definitely, definitely struggled last week, week, but I think, I think their best opponent's going to be their defense. defense. I think the, the fact, fact that, you know, to really help this this, 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 this offense, offense really establish themselves, really create momentum, they need the offensive line to create some lanes for their backs and really run the ball. Right, it gives the rest of the offense new light when they have a consistent run game. Defensively, I think it's really, really impressive the most. I think that they played just out, out of the world. world. And, and for three quarters, quarters it was, what, what six points, I think, what you said? Uh, 63 it, yards. 63 yards. Right. Going yeah. into late in third quarter. So, yeah. again, like, 63 yards to Rye. Rye's offense has been really explosive. Yeah. And, and we, we even saw how, how, how Rye can't have that comeback victory against Bruce in week one. And, and I, I think, think that, like, it just shows, shows you that they have the ability to make big plays. And when Yorktown basically limits them, right, in all facets, right, that just shows you how well this defense is playing. And I think 
you're, you're looking, looking at what you're going to do against Harrison, then you need to really create a negative plays, plays, be aggressive, and force you know, Harrison to have to make a big play to get first down on the third, on the third, on the third down version. So, Yorktown has the ability to do so, but they definitely need to improve on their off efficiency and just really try to methodically go down. Let's go to Harrison, Mars. This has been a very explosive offense. Last two weeks, they've scored 81 points. They've also allowed 58 points defensively. And let's start with that offense. Mars ran for 236 yards last week. Very powerful rush attack. Christian uh, Barcella, two rushing touchdowns last week. He's been a very vocal point of this rushing offense multiple weeks now. But again, this offensive line is going up against a very uh, aggressive defensive front. Not a very huge front but very aggressive, and they're going to send blitzes. They're going to have these linemen moving. Um, I'm going to see how this offensive line, who, again, they like to take angles. They're doing option. They'll, they'll pull linemen. Now, how are they going to handle uh, negating these negative plays that Yorktown wants to generate? They want to get Harrison in that second, third, and long because, again, that's when Harrison's at its weakest, right? It's when they have to just do straight drop back passing. But when they're ahead of the chain, they're very deadly. And so, to me, when I see this offense, you know, they're going to run the ball is obviously the main focus over 200 plus rushing yards at the last couple of weeks. Um, their quarterback Citro was very good last week. Mark, 10 of 14, 108 yards and a touchdown. Also had 103 yards rushing. I mean, very good performance by their quarterback. And what they're going to do is put McLaughlin out there. And, you know, if there's too much space between him and the corner, they'll just hike and throw it to him and have him create some plays. Um, but if they come start moving up a little bit, that's when, Hey, we're going to send McLaughlin deep. So, and if they can run the ball, then they can kind of take those, take that defensive back and put them on an island versus McLaughlin. And that's when those big plays can be generated passing the football. But they have a couple backs who can make plays. But their quarterback, if he's that efficient, Citro, big things can happen. Defensively, obviously, all eyes are on Myrellis. You know, even when we talked about he didn't have the greatest performance, he still had 97 total yards. This is a guy, again, running the ball, catching the ball. Um, the ball is going to be in his hands a lot, and slowing him down is the number one priority for this Harrison defense. Um, they need to force Gonzalez to kind of beat you, throwing it to other guys. Um, that's going to have to be the, the focal point. And if that happens, then, hey, you chalk it up to him. But that's got to be the number one priority. Um, giving up big plays, they have done that, Mars. They have given up some big yardage and some big plays. But one thing they've done pretty well this year, forcing turnovers. And that's a big one. And then give their offense extra possessions. Um, they had three INTs last week. Um, Mars, what are your thoughts on Harrison? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think Harrison, Harrison has been, been very, very, I think very, very efficient offensively. I think that they have been really uh, good on the run offense. I think they've been, uh, I, if you really, really analyze the offensive line, they've been playing very well. And I think that they are really the driving force, force here, but I do agree with you that the, the quarterback position, 10 and 14, they're very efficient. I think they just need to really keep running the ball, really open up the rest of this offensive game here. Because like I said, Harrison has the ability to kind of mix and match the tempos they want to be with. And, and they've, they've been, been very efficient, efficient doing so. so. Defensively, I think the, the fact is they have to really try to slow down Marellis. I think they, they need, need to force some turnovers and get their offense some more, cute, more options uh, when, when they get the ball back again. And, and I think that, that is where how they can really control the momentum of this game, control the tempo, and make it change any way they want to. I think that's going to be their game plan and what they want to see. I think this is how they can make this game a very close game. All right, say this about Harrison, right? They, if they throw less than 15 times, they're in pretty good shape, right? Mm -hmm. That's week 10 of 14. Well, let's talk about the keys of the game, Mars. Um, my two big keys right here, the first one is turnovers, right? Both these defenses have done a really good job of forcing turnovers. Who wins the turnover battle this week is going to be huge. That's going to be my number one key. And my second key is quarterback pressures, Right? Whatever team can stop the run game and get the other team into second, third, and long, now you can use their speed. Yorktown's got speed. Uh, Harrison's got speed on that defense. Now they can start to generate some pressures up front, and that's what will lead to turnovers. That's going to be the big thing, Mars. Um, any thoughts on my keys, or do you have a matchup you want to bring up? Uh, well, well, I have a matchup. I think, I think it's going to really depend, depend on the fronts. fronts. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm always, always a big, big offensive and defensive line, line guy, but, but at the end of the day, I really think that this, this offensive line, line of Harrison's going to have to step it up big time. time. I think. Your town has really good defense, and I think that if they can over lanes, and it will give their offense some new light. But obviously, your town defense has been so 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 well coached, and they've been very efficient. So it's going to be interesting to see this battle between these two groups. Yeah, and being in front, that was my matchup to this Harrison offensive line versus this 
Yorktown front, Mars. And if you can kind of get them into second and medium, third and short, they don't, they can't be that aggressive anymore if you're running right at them, right? So if you get them into ahead of the chains, I think that you can kind of uh, subdue the aggressiveness of Yorktown. But my player to watch, Mars, wide receiver, defensive back, return of Chris McLaw in Mars. He kind of had the, uh, he, he kind of had the cycle last week. He had a receiving touchdown, kick return touchdown, INT for a touchdown as well for Harrison Mars. This is one of the best. If you don't know him now, get to know him. This young man is one of the biggest playmakers in this class. Um, and this is a guy who can affect each phase of the game. And so he is my player to watch for this game. This is a guy, again, can win at each phase. Um, and could be a big player for them. All right, Mars, let's go to our game picks. And you were talking a lot of trash at the start of the show about your uh, lead. But let's talk about last week, where I went 6-1 and one last week. You went 5-2, and two, and our friends at Lowhead went 5-2. and two. So I won last week, but overall, you are right. Um, you are ahead of the group. You are 12-3 and three on the season so far in A. I am 11 and four, and our friends at Lowhead are at 11 and four, but there's no widening gap. There's a very thin paper gap um, that Mars has that I have to try to pass. But let's dive into it, Mars, this week. First game, St. Francis Academy, the B team at Somers, who is 2 and 0. This is obviously a non league game. And St. Francis is a very strong program. Obviously, they have two teams playing the B team, um, have a lot of talented guys. I do respect Somers for, for kind of scheduling these games out on their bye. Um, so I do give kudos to them for that. And when I look at Somers, Mars, offensively, they have gotten off to slow starts, right? There's no question about it. I do think, again, they've been a, kind of a second-half offensive team. Fitzsimons, though, 11-14, 173 yards, the passing touchdown, two rushing touchdowns last week. Um, Savino had 78 yards rushing. And Savino running with some physicality is going to be real important. They need that kind of physical runner. Right in that Somers offense at times, they can get those harder and runs. But one big thing that they could do is get Ravi Das some more touches in space. I mean, he had 114 total yards. They gave him more ball, more touches in the second half. He had two touchdowns last week, and you know they want to try to get this offense off to faster starts, right? And and defensively, Mars as slow starts as they had defensively, they've only allowed 13 points in two weeks. This defense has been fine, right? The defense has been strong. They've done a pretty darn good job of limiting big plays. They're going to have to play big again. And, and this offense, I do think, will start off a little bit quicker this week, Mars. I'm actually going to go with Somers. Yeah, yeah I, think I think I'm going to go with Somers, Somers too. too. I, I think, think that they, they have, you know, they always start, start out with uh, a little slow, slow but, but they, they end up picking up by the halftime point. point. And, and I, I think that they're, they're going to do the same thing, thing here. I think, I'll say that St. Francis is a good program, but I think Somers is kind of becoming that, you know, down. They've already been down, but they've been kind of that group that, that is shown a lot by even going to play against other teams from other states or just in other areas. Um, and, and I think Somers, Somers has enough to really make big, big plays. I'm going to go with Somers. Somers here. Eastchester 2-1 and one at Clarkstown North, who's 1-2. and two. We broke this team down earlier, Mars. Eastchester is an interesting, scrappy team. They have a lot of weapons. Clarkstown North has given up a lot of yards. Eastchester has an opportunity to make some big plays. But Clarkstown North 0-2 in league play, Mars, at home. I feel this is a good, I, you know, there's going to be some teams that are playing pretty desperate at home this week. Clarkstown North is one of them. I think this game is very close. I'm going to go with Clarkstown North. I think this offensive line steps up. Defensively, they have to prevent the amount of yards that they have. I do think they do enough. East Chester will hit some big plays, but Clarkstown North will control the time of possession. I'm going Clarkstown North. I'm going to go with East Chester. Chester. I, I think they're, they're pretty, pretty tough. tough. I'm I'm both they, you know, with, with the victory with Maypack. Maypack. And, and the you know, tough, tough game, game they had against Somers, Somers. They, they were tough for most of those games, games and I really think that they have the ability to make, make, things, make the game, game close, and, and I think that they come away with, with it at the very end. I'm going to go with Clarkstown South 2-0 and at Fox Lane, who's 1-2. and This is another league game. Listen, Fox Lane, I love the scrappiness there. Well-coached football team. They they have an edge to them, um, and I like that about Fox Lane. But Clarkstown South, you know, if they play defense like they did last week, they're going to be tough to beat. And Clarkstown South, I think, just has too many weapons. I love the physicality they ran the ball with last week. That continues that balance of attack and the defense stepping up. I'm going Clarkstown South. Yeah, yeah I'm going to do, do the same. same. I, think I think South, South has, has been, been more consistent. consistent. I, think I think the, the defense, defense has gotten, gotten better. better. The, the offense, offense is great. The offensive line is moving people. I think they can, they're going to only continue doing this in this game. I'm going to go Clarkstown South. Nyack 0-2 at Rye, who's 3-0. This is a league game. 
Listen, when I look at Nyack Mars, Ray Boone is a game breaker. I mean, he had a kick return for a touchdown last week. He's a guy in space is as fast as anybody. A shifty guy um, can play, again, win multiple phases in the game. And obviously that quarterback, Mike Fowler, had a passing touchdown. He's had a pass touchdown now two straight. Eric Ballard had a receiving touchdown last week. And when you look at Ryan Mars, they are the cardiac kids this year. I mean, their coaching staff must have uh, must have their cardiologist on speed dial because they come out so slow at times, so slow. Sometimes it's the defense that's slow. Sometimes it's the offense that's slow. And they just pick it up. They don't just bowl. They just continue to play the game and make such big plays in the second half of games that have won them at the end. But they are the cardiac kids. Um and boy, they, they must put a lot of stress on their coaching staff. But their quarterback, A.J. Miller, we talk about him a lot. He had a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown last week. Um, this offensive line, though, definitely needs to step up. They gave up four-plus sacks last week, Mars. They need to be better in pass protection this time around. I gave him a lot of kudos last week, um, but too many sacks uh, last uh, last game. But a guy to keep in mind, talked about it a little bit, but he definitely needs to be recognized more, Referred to McSweeney, all right, wide receiver and defensive back. He had two INTs last week. Touchdown in three straight games, Mars. The defense also stepped up last week, and because of that, I think Rye wins this one. Yeah, I'm also going to go Rye. I think that Rye, like like you said, has been the comeback kid. They've been uh, always competing. Uh, and, I have Cardiac. Well, I'm, I'm calling the comeback kid because they basically have been, uh, you know, I, I'm going to call them that ever since uh, the Brewster game, but essentially they, you know, obviously they've been playing tough, right? They always start out slow, and then they, all of a sudden they, have an explosion of sorts from the offense, and obviously we have to look at AJ Miller as being one of those the key cogs of that, right? I think that Rye just has too much, um, you know, to, for for any team to handle. But I think Nyack is it's gonna be a close game, but I think that Rye's gonna win. Uh, Nyack just I don't think he has enough to slow down Rye's real quick, explosive real offense. Quick. Does Rye go up first or does Nyack go first? Nyack goes up first. Oh my God, that's gonna happen three weeks in a row. You gotta be kidding me. Um, I think Rye goes up. All right, let's get to the next game, Mars. Pelham, 3-0 and at Mayapak, who's 1-1. and Again, we talked about this. Some of these desperate teams at home. Crowd's going to be absolutely wild. I do think Mayapak's offensive line steps up. And Koch, obviously, is going to have to carry the load. I do think he gets 25-plus carries. He has to, right? He has to get 25-plus carries this week. But I do think this is a respect game. I mentioned it earlier. I think Pelham, this feels like, hey, you know, we can make a real statement here and win this game. I think they put them in a really good spot to compete for a league title. I mean, this is a huge opportunity for Pelham, who's 2-0 in league play, possibly going to 3-0 in league play. This could be a huge opportunity. I'm going to go with Pelham, Mars. I think Pelham, this game will be close, but I think Pelham makes enough plays at the end of this game to win this game. Um, again, defensively, they have given up some big plays before, which does concern me. But I think Luke Green's going to have to go off. And this other uh, defensive line is going to have one-on-one opportunities. I think Pelham wins this one. Yeah, you know what's uh, kind of crazy here? I think that this, in my, I know we didn't say this was a desperation game, but I kind of feel like it is. And I think Maypac is in is in a tough spot because if you lose this game, right, then all of a sudden now you, you, let's just say you win out or you at least win two more games here, then it could be a possible tie-breaking scenario, which allows you to make the playoffs. So I feel like this is kind of like that game to at least ease the tensions or ease the stress that's currently on Mayapak. And it's at home. It, it, that has to be the big one, right? Yeah. League home uh, game. Yeah. you got to try to win those league home games. That, and that's the thing that I always, and listen, we're both Mayapak brands. We know the intensity that comes with playing in Mayapak at your own hometown. Uh, and they've had a bye week. So at the end of the day, they have more of the reason to win the game. They have more time to prepare. They have more, you know, obviously more rest for your players. And this is a home game. For all those reasons, I'm going Mayapak. At the end of the day, they're the bigger team. They, they're bigger, the bigger school. They have some size up front. They have guys like like the, the Koch brothers, Joey and Danny Koch, who are great playmakers for this offense. You have Anthony Porco, who's a top-level talent on the defensive line. You have guys that are there. You're home. You have everything in your favor at this point. And they have the b- biggest motivator of all you time. Hear this, Tom. You hear this? The damn, biggest motivator I you. think I could ever hear, and that's it. That is desperation. This is a desperation game. Home field advantage. There's no other reason that should push you in the direction 
This is a this should be a win for Mayapac, so let's find out. I'm Ben Mayapac here. Let's go to the next game. Lakeland two and one at Brewster, who's 0 and two. Similar scenario what I said about North and Mayapac, right? Brewster at home. They're 0 and two in league play. Again, it feels like a, a win that they need to have. Again, it's not do or die, right? It's not do or die. But you, these home league games, you gotta find a way to win these ones. I'm gonna go with Brewster Mars. Listen, Lakeland, I'm not sure what quarterback is going to go. Even if Grady Leonard comes back, I think this defense steps up for Lakeland. But Brewster, I think they're going to be pretty physical with them. And they're going to make enough plays. I think they, if they can just prevent big plays in the passing game, I think they have a real opportunity to win. I think they will. I'm going to go with Brewster. Yeah, same reasons I'm going to go for Manpac. I'm going to go with Brewster. I think Brewster is the high of the home field advantage. This needs – this. I might be – I mean, I know you're not saying it's a desperation mode. But I feel like it is kind of, right? It's the same type of scenario from APAC. You, you have to win this game. You're at I home. said not do or die. It's not do or die, but I think this is a desperation game. I think this is a desperation game for me. And I think this is a big game because if you lose, now you're really in a tough spot. You, they have to win here. I think they, they're at home. They have the advantage on that. The, the crowd's going to be rocking. I think they have some size up front, too. And you also don't know health-wise for Lakeland. You know, who's going to be there all there, right? So I think Brewster should win this game. I'm going to go with Brewster. Sleepy Hollow 2-1 and one at John Jay Cross River, who's 1-2. and two. Listen, Sleepy Hollow, the quarterback in the hood, continues to impress me. Defensively, though, they've given up way too many big plays last week versus Pelham, uh, especially in the running game. When I look at John Jay Cross River, last week was their first win for Coach Kando. Their quarterback, Galea Mar, 17 of 20 for 217 yards, four touchdowns last week. Um, really impressive performance. Zach and Nino Mars, he had over 120 yards receiving and three touchdowns. And Shapiro, over 200 total yards. That trio is pretty devastating, right? I'm going to go with John Jay Cross River. Uh, what impressed me even more about those weapons, Mars, defensively. right? Defensively, they were pretty strong last week against North, only limiting to one touchdown. I mean, if John Jay Cross River can be physical and can swarm to the ball like that with these offensive weapons, that's kind of the John Jay Cross River we were hoping to see preseason, right? And so this could be a spark plug at home again in a league game. I'm going John Jay. Yeah, I'm also going to go John Jay. I think that they, they've they been stepping it up, especially, I mean, offensively, they've been doing very well. Defensively, they've been stepping it up. And I think that's what's scary about John Jay Cross River is that when you have an offense and defense both clicking, um, and John Jay Cross River, they have a lot of talent. So I think that when everything's going well for them, they make they are a more deadlier team than what people see. And I think that they're gonna win this game here. I'm going to dodge across the river. And what's the big thing, Mars, right? Cleaner. They played cleaner last week. Yep. Right? And they fit they made stops defensively. Right? That was the big thing. And they did that. Can they continue that? They'll win a lot of games. Game of the week time, Mars. Yorktown two and one at Harrison, who's two and one league game right here. Mars, who do you have winning and why? Yeah, when I'm looking at this game, I think Harrison, you have a very efficient offense. I mean, the, the fact that they've been uh, you know, doing very well on the, on the run, the offensive line has been doing playing pretty solid, but it's going to be a really tough game. I mean, obviously, you're looking at Yorktown. Their defense has been very good. They kind of struggled a little bit last week, but at the end of the day, I think their offense needs to kind of make some bigger plays, run the ball to at least give some more, you know, more availability on the offensive side. For your younger player, right, to make big plays. Um, I think this is going to be a really tough game. I'm going to go with Yorktown. I think Yorktown's defense has been performing pretty well. I think that they're going to give the offense a lot more opportunities to make big plays, and I think they will set the tone on the run. I think they, they are going to force Harrison into some longer scenarios, and they just won't capitalize on them as much as they need to. I think this game will be close, but like I said, I think Yorktown's going to win here. Over under my relis, 120 yards total. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go with the over. I'll take the over. Okay, interesting. Well, listen, I think you make a lot of good points. Your town is a team that I like. I think they've been scrappy defensively. You see multiple guys making plays for them. Now, offensively, can they be efficient in the passing game? I do think my relis is going to have a much better game. I'm also going to take the over on the 120 total yards, but I'm going to go with Harrison. And the reason why is this. I think they're going to be able to run the ball and be ahead of the chains, which will not allow Yorktown's defense to be as aggressive as they like to be, where they force turnovers and get those sacks, right? So I think Harrison gets in front of the chains. I think they control the time of possession. 
I think this one's going to be pretty high scoring, Mars, because Harrison does make me a little nervous. They give up some big plays on defense, but they also force turnovers. And for that, two evenly matched teams, I'm going with the home team. Harrison wins this one. All right, everyone, that was our show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you guys enjoy this weekend's games and make sure to hit a thumbs up and subscribe for future content and to help the channel. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you all very soon.